these are not serious pay demands. Uh, and I really struggle at this point with the argument that they're out there picketing for better uh, services for their patients in the NHS. Um, patients' lives are being put at risk by the strike. We know that there's going to be horrible repercussions for those patients. It's an estimated 350,000 appointments and procedures will be canceled over the next four days. Um, women's cesareans, planned cesareans are being canceled. People aren't getting their cancer diagnosis. Um, let's not pretend that this is for patients. Um, and if you want to talk about pay, look, your average junior doctor is earning, it's quite a wide range between 25,000 pounds baseline minimum up to almost 70,000 pounds baseline minimum. And that is not before you calculate what they're earning extra for weekend work, night shifts, on social But, but on Twitter this afternoon, a second year junior doctor put his pay slip mm -hmm. on. It's 1,823 pounds a year mm -hmm. last month. Now, um, there'll be many people listening to this programme who don't get paid as much as that. But if you, as Natalie said, if you've gone through however many years it is of, of training, the, the student debt that you, you've built up over those years, you might expect to earn a little but bit more But hold on, we can say that about so many professions, and in, there's so few professions where your lifetime earning is going to come anywhere close to what a doctor can earn. So, and, and, and we also need to factor in pensions here too, right? Taxpayers are on the line for paying 20% into doctors and nurses' pensions. So maybe we need to have a conversation and rejig how in... much money they get up front. Hold on, just yeah. let me finish. Maybe we need to have a conversation to rejig what money they get up front compared to what we're paying into their pensions. But there's a reason that the lifetime allowance was lifted in the last budget to get more doctors back into work. Over the course of your lifetime, this is an extremely well-paid profession. Many people will empathize with not getting inflation-based pay raises because the average pay raise in this country is below the rate of inflation. Doctors are not unique in this. I do think their working conditions must be addressed in the same way patient conditions must be addressed. But the idea that these are, you know, it, in any real way, low paid jobs, especially over the course of one's lifetime, but it's ridiculous. But compared to other countries, they are. And that, that's part of the problem oh, here, is it's staff retention. Yes, compared to other countries, and I would love to adopt some of those countries' healthcare systems, right? You want to start talking to me about the German system, the Australian system, the Netherlands, you want to even talk about France? We can talk about why in those systems doctors get paid more money, but you cannot, on one hand, refuse to talk about reform, as Philip has mentioned, always say that that's a backdoor mm. to privatization, which it is not. You cannot c call yourself a public servant and say, you know, I'm working for the state in this monopoly on healthcare that we think is a public good. And then on the other hand, demand the kinds of salaries that you get from more free market healthcare. You can't have both. Holly Dugmore, are junior doctors pay demands fair? That's what uh, Cara wants to know. Yes. So would how would you pay for it? Is that all you have to say? You like, uh, well, I mean, we can get into it. How would I pay for yeah, it? Yeah, how would you pay for it? Where are you finding that money? Taxes. Okay, tax the okay. rich, tax them until the pips squeak. So, so Gen the genuinely, what, what taxes are you raising? Hang on, yeah. one, who one am I arguing is, with? One is, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let Ollie set out his stool. Um, there is money in our political system. Where it gets spent is a political choice. Let's talk about the £4 billion in unusable PPE, a lot of which that money went to Conservative Party cronies, peers, donors. It is an ethical choice how we spend money in government. And... I would challenge people in this country that if they want to go out and they want to clap for the NHS during a pandemic when we were literally sending them into hospitals to confront a disease that we didn't know anything about, sometimes wearing bin liners, that we, those people deserve fair pay. They're not, they're not actually asking for an extraordinary pay rise. They're asking for the restoration of what they were paid in 2008. That's not an unreasonable demand. So do you think part of the solution might be for the government to come forward and say, OK, we get that you've lost this money since 2010. We, we accept that. We accept mm. that part of your argument. We can't give you 35% now. You, you don't expect it. There's no way that we can do that. But over the next three, four, five years, we will do it. And here's the proposal. Yeah. Now that, to me, would be the logical way it's forward. Called, it's called negotiation. No, but here. Ian, I, I'm sorry, everybody has lost out. Everyone. It's not just doctors, it's not just nurses. Everybody has lost out. And you can't point to a one-off COVID spend, as irresponsible as some of that spending was, I agree with you. You can't point to a one-off spend and claim that that's how you would fund a perpetual commitment, which again isn't just salary, but is a massive pension on top of that as well, and say that's how I'd fund it. So seriously, you know, you've both said you would, 35% is reasonable. You'd fund how would through, you fund it? You'd fund it through productivity gains. One of... No, I'm sorry, let's, I'm sorry, let's try that. Like, <laughs> 
let's know. I, I want to know how you fund it. Here's it. One of the reasons we have low labour force participation uh, in this country is the rise of endemic health and chronic conditions that remain unaddressed. One of the tragedies of our current situation is, is our NHS is, performs very poorly against all sorts of international criteria in terms of health outcomes from cancer to, to any number of, uh, of chronic conditions. We have a very poor health system where nobody is in charge, where nobody wants to reform and where there is no net gain. We also have, have an astonishingly cheap uh, um, health system. If you look really? at GDP, yeah. If you look oh. at GDP spend, the Americans spend twice our GDP on their health care. That's because it's very inefficient. And and, and it's a private. It's the free market yeah, health care. And, 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 and it has worse. One in six pounds spent by the government is spent yeah. on the NHS. How much more would you like it to spend? The point I'm trying to make is that is that our health services actually, if you look in terms of GDP spend, is one of the most e efficient in terms I'm sorry, of spend. Sorry, it's not. Those in, figures in, are wildly in, out of in, date. In the in, in terms of GDP spend, it's not. What we have is an unreformed, dysfunctional systemic system, and what the staff need to do is to is to accept the need for structural reform on a grand scale if we're going to improve health. And that's what's absent from any union good demand. Good luck to any political party that goes into the next election saying we want to have structural reform of the NHS. <laughs> Natalie, that's I, 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 I've just got to take, on, disagree, take on, on Philip's point about our health outcomes, mm. which are absolutely dreadful. Mm. But the question is whether you blame the NHS. We have some of the worst housing stock in Europe. Well, it's multi we, we, uh, we have a terrible diet. We have all terrible true. air pollution. All, all, of those things have, all of those things have impacts yeah. on people's health outcomes. We also uh, have a 7.2 million waiting list on the NHS. I think the NHS probably 7 has... 7.5 by the end of this week. I think we have some responsibility here to, to put on the but, NHS. But, but, but we eat as a society twice as many ready reels as the rest of Europe on average. We also have the second longest working hours in Europe and pre-COVID we had we double the average eating time. Again, aren't you? Uh, well, and, oh, and I'm working, on your side, but... Uh, and working hours and terrible housing. We everything we makes people unhealthy because our society is unhealthy. We the NHS do. can't fix those just as schools can't fix but nobody... the impacts of poverty and inequality on right. health and education outcomes. I'm going to be very unhealthy myself if I don't bring this to a close.